Welcome to the Awakened Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Walters. Get ready to create magic and miracles as you lean into your heart's desires. I believe not only does the heart want what it wants, but it knows. This show is a weekly deep dive into what it means to live from an awakened heart. I'll be sharing inspiring stories and real conversations with people just like you who have turned the ordinary into the extraordinary. My mission is to show you how you too can be connected and heart-centered in every area of your life. Your journey to aligning with more love, more joy, and your wildest dreams come true starts now. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Awaken Heart Podcast. Today, we are going to dive in some more fun as this is a continuation of the, the love languages that was part one last week with Steve Shinnon, where we talked about the love languages, the very popular book by Gary Chapman, which sold millions and millions of copies worldwide and is still being used today. There's a great test that you can take to see what actually makes you tick, what makes you feel loved. The way we necessarily feel loved might not be how our partner feels loved. So we could be banging our heads on the wall, trying to show them how we feel that they should be loved, and it actually doesn't work for them because they speak a whole different language. And some of the languages are acts of service, words of affirmation, quality time, personal touch, and gifts. So it's really important to find out what makes your partner tick so we can speak the same languages and really allowing our relationships to thrive. This week, we take that a step further and we do the love languages with the five senses. So we're going to stimulate the senses, you know, when we come in with intention of wanting to create an amazing experience for our loved one, for our partner, we can have the most stimulating, sensual, sexual experiences by using taste, touch, sound, the sound of your lover's voice, this certain touch, the taste of some erotic oils on your lover's body. You are stimulating the senses. And when it's backed with intention, like we can experience like out of body, mind blowing, mind altering orgasms to say the link and experiences because let's face it, we all love sex. We love to have good sex. And when you're backed with some emotionally feeling love, feeling wanted and finding out what each of our partner really wants, it heightens the experience even more. Steve and I dive into this topic and get really raw and real and really PG-13. So a little bit about Steve is a neurolinguistic programming certified practitioner and trauma coach who helps men and women energetically process through deeply rooted emotional wounding to strengthen emotional intimacy, experiencing electrifying sex lives, and cultivate positive communication in their romantic relationships. Steve is passionate about providing his clients the emotional space of being heard. And he says that emotional trauma is a language of the past. So sit back, enjoy, put the kids in another room, and let's talk about sex, baby. Here we go. I know uh, regarding the love languages, you have a certain way that you incorporate the five senses. Can you expand a little bit more on that? Yeah, I I love everything about the love language and incorporating your senses, it kind of elevates the love languages even more um, based upon on top of what this person craves for in love. When you're able to understand what type of sense your romantic partner craves or what he or she gravitate towards, you can even personalize your love language even more. So kind of going off of your senses, like for for we'll start off with with hearing. Understanding with hearing, if somebody has, oh my God, I love listening to music. Something about music. It just it brightens my day. It starts my day off with energy and whatsoever. Or knowing that somebody likes to be stimulated by by the, the sound. It's talking to somebody. It's your voice. It's knowing that when your voice goes down here, it is so sexy. Mm. So I'm not going to talk up here all the time when I'm trying to get her turned on. Mm. I'm going to talk down here. I'm going to talk really slow. I'm going to tell her exactly what I want, what I'm going to do. 
and we're just going to talk like this. So I'm talking very sensually. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking with intention, and I'm talking with purpose, as well as I'm, I'm getting really into my masculine, talking in a very lower tone. Because when you're talking very serious, talking about something very specific, you want to talk slower, as well as lower. So you're talking lower into your stomach. And using that, you can use that in different ways, you know, whether you are sharing something with somebody, knowing that they care about how things sound. You know, it's when you get excited, it's being excited with them and it's sharing that excitement with them. You're when they're excited, you are excited with them. Like when she's like, oh my God, I just got this new job. You're like, hmm. And you're listening. You're like, really? Interesting. No, you're like, really? Oh my God. Tell me more. <laughs> because when you're experiencing conversations with a woman, she takes in your energy. She takes in your energy and she flows with it. So if she's excited, it's not that you are becoming somebody that you're not. You are sharing the experience in both what she's saying as well as the energy that she's putting out. And the energy is her expressions, her voice, her energy, her pitch, how excited she is. So when you're using your hearing, you are using your voice in a way that's going to expand this, this, this conversation. And it can also be with your, with your taste, you know, knowing that this person craves taste. If she craves acts of service, well, if you don't know how to cook, watch YouTube. There's a ton of easy 30 minute meals, knowing that she craves you to doing things for her, it lights up her heart, knowing that she loves tasting things. She loves tasting foods. She loves tasting different types of wines. Like she's a wine connoisseur. You know, she, she loves everything about taste. It can also involve having edible lotions that you can taste when you're romantically involved with somebody and those kind of things. So there's all these different things that you can incorporate in different parts of your life that involve taste. And that is amazing. I, I just have to add to that, the edible lotions. I've tried those before. None of them taste good. So why don't we just get out some honey? Why don't we just get some, out some coconut and put some peanut butter and some whipped cream? So, so yes, that, that would be fun. I've done that before. It works. Some chocolate, some chocolate as well. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've tried sour apple. Sour apple is amazing. Ooh. Oh, okay. Body yeah. lotion. Oh, I guess you can't give a massage with peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. Okay. So let's try the sour apple if we're going to do a massage and add some taste to it. Yeah. Because like when we're experiencing the best moments, whether it's having a meal, you know, it's being physically intimate with somebody, it's experiencing something new. If we love tasting and we incorporate that, it just enhances that experience on another level because on top of receiving the love that we want, we're being stimulated by our most prominent sense and going into going into sight it can be everything from something that is really visual whether it's um knowing that something scenic really matters to that person so spending quality time and then going to the grand canyon just witnessing the sight of what nature has how beautiful it is you know or you're getting something that is truly beautiful that she can look at every day you know it's a it's a picture of her favorite waterfall in peru or something you know something that she has mentioned to you that oh my god just seeing that was breathtaking mm -hmm. and listening to your partner especially how he or she speaks when he or she says oh my god i feel this so much in my heart you know or oh my god did you see that i love how that looks on you or whatsoever. If this person constantly is expressing themselves in communication by saying, I see that, or I feel that, or I got, I hear you, I hear you. And they're constantly saying that, or God, I love how this sounds, or I love how you sound when you do this or that, or I love how you sound with this. That is telling you something. These are cues for you to recognize, to be self-aware of that this is what my partner is communicating to me in how he or she views the world and what sense she just resonates with the most, you know, and going into, going into touch, 
You know, if you like to be touched, like what are ways that you can touch somebody that really makes that person feel connected? For a guy, it's, you know, if he's waiting in line at McDonald's, like touching the small of her back, mm -hmm. just touching the small of her back, that just lifts a woman up. Or it's moving the hair on her behind her ear. Oh, gosh. And just doing that. Just putting it behind her ear and then just holding her her face in, in the palm of your hand and then just kind of going down her face, mm -hmm. you know, but it's that feeling of touching these parts of your body that stimulates you, those erogenous zones, you know, those non-sexual zones that it does something, especially to a woman, you know, whether it's, um, does something to our heart, really, it is, it is. it's foreplay at the, at the greatest form. It is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with you on that. And one of the most interesting things that I learned was forearm massages. I never knew yeah. how amazing a forearm massage was until I received a half an hour forearm massage. Mm -hmm. Just my forearms mm -hmm. from a woman. And she was telling me like, this is the best part of getting a massage. I'm like, really? Like, I thought it was like your neck, your lower back, your butt or whatsoever. But she was like, until you receive a good forearm massage, you don't know what a massage is. So I felt it. I was like, oh my God, this feels amazing. And when I learned how to give a forearm massage to massaging a woman's wrist mm -hmm. inside of her forearms to the palms of her hands to her fingers. She'll melt. She melted. And she was like, oh my God. Like you said, this is like foreplay. Mm -hmm. And it's so intimate, touching a woman's forearm, touching her hands because there's so many senses like so many nerves like on your hands on your palms like you're just running your hands slowly across her palms like with with just like feather like touches it just stimulates a woman and knowing those kind of things knowing that if you touch a woman's ankle you know both sides of her ankle that can stimulate parts of her sexual organs i didn't know that until somebody taught me that mm -hmm. and touching that and asking questions like, where are you feeling? Like, how is this doing? Is this doing anything for you? Knowing that having those conversations, you can find out exactly what types of touch actually matters to her more than the other. And that's something that I learned through Miss Jaya through an event that I went through that she incorporates testing things out in lovemaking and they call it the AB game. So you're testing out different touches and you're either getting uh, yeah, that's good. Or, Oh my God, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how to touch somebody when you're providing foreplay or you're just being intimate. And it may not even lead to sex because a lot of times touching somebody with no intention of having sex, that can turn somebody on even more than knowing that this is all he cares about is having sex with me, having an orgasm, and then having a sandwich and then going to sleep. You know, like when, 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 when uh, a man is like, sandwich? <laughs> why don't I go make some sandwiches? Remember the Santa Claus? Yeah. I'll go make some sandwiches. I don't want sandwiches. <laughs> or it's a hot foot Sunday. It's, it's sandwich or hot okay. foot Sunday. Yeah. Right. I'll, keep, I'll keep my fridge stocked with that. Yeah. Turkey, ham, some good wheat bread. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, you said something. What I was actually going to bring up is intentional. Like mm. you're doing that just because you know that it pleasures her and it might not lead to sex. You're not having the intention for this forearm massage to go to sex. You're doing it because it's pleasuring her and she picks up on that. So it can lead to sex and it yeah. might lead to sex, but it's not intended to. You're doing it just because. And when a woman feels a man is doing something for her just because, it opens up her heart more and it stimulates her more. So it's just, it's like, you know, I guess that's another acts of service. He's just servicing you because he wants to, because you want to. And from conversations that I've had with different women, it's a lot of times it's the sense that he wants to do this is even bigger than the actual what he's doing. So the fact that he wants to take out the trash, he wants to do that. It's not, I am nagging him to do this or whatever. Like he wants to do this for me, knowing he wants to do it for you, not because I have to tell him this every day when he gets home to do this knowing that he wants to do it. And on top of that, I don't have to tell him to do that. 
And on top of that, he's doing something that is clearing my environment. That just can make a woman really feel absolutely in her heart, in her feminine, knowing that he chose to want to give me this forearm massage. Mm -hmm. He could have just initiated sex and maybe sex may or may not have happened, but he chose to just massage my forearm and then he went to get a sandwich. Like, like he didn't do anything after that. And if I wanted to have sex, he opened that container for me mm -hmm. to then choose to allow him to feel that I want to have sex with him. But he didn't use massaging my forearms as kind of like a lead up to having sex because he knew that this is going to do something. He just did this out of the goodness of his heart because he knew that this really makes me feel like a woman. This makes me feel happy knowing that I am being taken care of. And it's kind of like how women often feel when they're getting a manicure or a pedicure. It's that feeling of being touched, of having somebody take care of them, making their fingers look beautiful or their toes look beautiful. And it's the sense of intention that they're being taken care of, you know? And that they want to do it. They want to do it. So yeah. get a little like PG-13 right here. So anyone that's like, you know, you might, you know, put the kids in the other room. <laughs> So that leads to sex, you know? So a lot of women, I in particular, this is one, I can't orgasm through just having sex or I haven't yet found the person. A lot of men make it their mission like, oh, you're going to, you know, you're going to have it with me. And then their egos get squashed when it doesn't happen. But the thing is, is a man who like going down, down on me works, mm -hmm. but it's not going to work if it's something I know that they don't like to do or they don't want to do or or it's just an, for their ego to make me orgasm that they're just, it's their mission so they can get on me and get, you know, get off how they want to. But when a man really loves doing it, and you know when they do, they just doing it because they love doing it. That's something that pleasures me. They know it. And it's something they want to give back to me. I'm able to relax. I'm able to, you know, not worry about how long it's taking. And it usually happens pretty quickly. Like my last partner, like, he was a master at it. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Full body orgasms off like through my spine, like the orgasms that just run up your fucking spine, like yeah. otherworldly, amazing. Those are amazing. Yes. And he loved doing it. And mm -hmm. I knew I'd love doing it, so I was able to relax into it. And it, it's like any act, allowing your woman to relax into it and get out of her head and getting into her body. And it's an intuitive, it's an intuitive knowing that he's there for her. He's yeah. not just out for himself. So a man's going to get off. It's a lot easier for them too. Even if they're not into the sex, they, they can still get off because it's like that physical thing, but a woman needs her senses stimulated. Totally. And I totally resonate with what you're saying because say you are a words of affirmation and you are auditory. You like hearing. Hearing when a man is at your most vulnerable. He's in between your legs. Yes. He is eating your pussy out. Mm -hmm. He is doing everything. He is licking your outer labia up and down. He's licking your inner labia. He is just fluttering his tongue across your clit. Hearing a man tell you, oh my God, you have the most beautiful pussy that I have ever, I have ever seen in my entire life. I love the way, I love the way it smells. I love the way your lips, I love how you taste. Like I just want to be inside you. And hearing these words because you're so auditory and you love words of affirmation, that really stimulates you on a different level when you're, when you're having sex because these are the things that you crave. You crave hearing these words of affirmations of knowing that he loves you or knowing that he loves being down there and he loves looking at you. He craves the beauty of you showing the most vulnerable of who you are as a woman. And I know a lot of women that that is something that women often struggle with is thinking whether or not they smell good, whether it looks good or whether it's beautiful and how it looks towards a man. And sometimes when you can tell a woman and you tell her exactly why you're telling her this is beautiful, it's because of this. And I'm sharing this. It really just lights a woman up hearing that, especially when words of affirmation matter to you, those words matter to you, and hearing those words while you're feeling the shiverness, feeling you're just on the edge of ecstasy. Hearing that and 
feeling that in your body somatically, that can definitely elevate like having oral sex with, with a man. Mm-hmm. And if a man does that, it does something to a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we are at our most vulnerable then. Our yeah. legs are open. We're exposed mm-hmm. and we're surrendering to you. Yes. I think it's more intimate than sex. Sex, you can just close your eyes if you need to or turn over and put bury your head in the pillow. I really yeah. feel it. But you're, as a woman, exposed, you're opening up to him and you're surrendering to him. So mm-hmm. that like it's it's like another gift it's a gift to a man to give to the woman and when it's coming from a place of pure intention we can feel that as women we know that we feel it mm-hmm. and, and going back to your abc game or ab game that's mm-hmm. important too because what has worked for you and another woman how she likes to receive play down there isn't going to work for another person i know me <laughs> i've had <laughs> I know the last love talk we did, we talked about the electric guitar with touch and the finger. Yeah. I'm like, dude, it's not electric guitar. Right. So like, get your hand away from there. It's right. The same, it's the same thing with the mouth. Some people are like, <laughs> they watch too much porn. Right. Like, ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't work. It hurts. Or the fingers, like the finger banging. No, that fucking hurts. Like mm-hmm. some people might like it, but I think most women don't. It's just it's care and it's, it's uh-huh. soft touch. And then there's a buildup. And, and um, I think discovering that when you get to a certain point in a relationship and your sexual relationship, really discovering what works for her. Does this work? How is this touch? Does that feel good? And you can tell by the way she is responding. You can tell by the way she's relaxing and surrendering. And it's the same for a man too, giving our men pleasure. What worked for even though it's easier for men to receive the physical act of pleasure. But I know I've heard from a lot of men as well, when you're connected emotionally to a woman, like the sex is even, it's better. It's out of this world. There's no comparison because it's a spiritual, physical, emotional connection and that can transcend. Yeah, totally. And that's kind of why I I also love um, incorporating Jaya's um, erotic blueprint where she breaks down between an energetic, where you're very much into foreplay, you're very much into non-sexual touch, um, a sexual who you can go from zero to 60 um, in a matter of seconds. And it's all about sex, nothing leading up to it. Or a sensual person, you need an environment to stimulate that feeling of safety, that feeling of comfort. You need your senses evoked. Um, you need candles, you need music, you need the lead up. Um, there's kinky people who are very much on their edges. Um, they like doing kinky things or bringing in different apparatuses or different types of toys involved in it. And then there's a shapeshifter where you're kind of like a, a chameleon of everything. And it's, it's being able to understand what type of person you are sexually. That can also help on top of the love languages and the senses. It's understanding what type of man or woman you are sexually. So how your partner is providing that container, they know exactly what is your crave. Because you may be a sexual person where all you need is just, hey, let's have sex, and you can just have sex. No foreplay, anything. But somebody who is energetic, she needs to be stimulated. She needs to be caressed. She needs to be felt. She's safe. She needs 20 minutes of foreplay. You know, She needs it to lead up to it for her to feel safe to then allow you inside of her. But if a woman is a sexual she doesn't want any of that foreplay you know she just wants to go in go out and then get a sandwich have, get a sandwich after that or or a hot dog or something you know like maybe an avocado sandwich or something but um <laughs> and it's and it's funny because there are men and women that have different types of blueprints that you are approaching this as oh my god like she needs this because she's a woman you know and like you were talking about like every person is different so just because somebody's a woman doesn't necessarily mean she needs 30 minutes of foreplay like she could just be a sexual person where she just loves sex and she doesn't need cuddling she doesn't need anything leading up to it she just loves the feeling of penetration of just having that primal energy combining She doesn't need any of everything else. And somebody else, they need to have leather. They need to have ball gags. They need to have all these things in order for them to feel safe, to being who they are as a person. So understanding that as well, that can also elevate the love languages because you're then speaking both by love as well as you're speaking their their sex language as well. Mm -hmm. 
and one size does not fit all. Yeah. And that's why it's an individual thing. But, you know, there's times when you do need that en- energetic, you need the lead up, you need the romance. Maybe she's had a hard day at work and, or whatever. You know, most of the times I know that is something that I really like to receive is like, I like a little stimulation, I like a little foreplay, but there's sometimes you just want to get, excuse my language, fucked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just want to be rammed against the wall and just high, fe- you know, fever, or maybe yep. a little bit on on the kinky. Bring out the hot wax and bring out the like silk scarf. So oh. it's juiciness. It's an undulation of many different styles of, you know, foreplay, love making, fucking, all that. So it's really, really getting to know your partner and understanding her, what her primary, and and being able to sense it and intuit it, right, and in go in whatever direction that is, and so. So one day, maybe your man just wants to get fucked. Okay, just fuck him. Yeah. Another time, you know, he needs a little more soothing. He needs a little, or a woman needs a little more romance. Go that direction. So yeah, keeping the spiciness alive. Now, Steve, how soon into a relationship, what do you think to start talking and introducing different things? Like, you know, introducing a ball gag or introducing, um, you know, oils or, you know, getting under, you know, getting the plastic um, sheets out and having sex underneath there. When is the right time to start having conversations around this, around these different styles? Yeah. Uh, for me, like, I, I feel like it should be after the, after your, your, your second time having sex, because you don't want to go into a relationship um, especially the first time you're actually having sex with somebody with all these, these thoughts, these, um, these ideas and everything you want it to just, the first time you just want it to happen organically. And you want to know if this person, if you are compatible with this person, like, do you enjoy the feeling of being with this person? Like, is this person, does this person treat you how you want to be treated, um, sexually and emotionally? Like, like, are you the type of person that craves this and you learn from the first time that this person shies away from this? You crave to be cuddled after sex. This person just wants to be on his own and he doesn't want to be touched. And all it was was sex. So that's something to recognize. Mm-hmm. And then maybe the second time, it's seeing if that was just a one time occurrence or if you provide some kind of stability, some kind of safeness for that person that creates him to feel happy in his own skin, to being happy with who he is. And then he feels safe because maybe he didn't feel safe to show that side of him in the first time because he's trying to be a man and he's trying to show how strong he is, that he has no emotions or whatever, whatever his reason is for not taking in your wanting to spoon or whatever. It's providing that safety, that comfort and, and just kind of seeing how, how that comes about. And if the same behavior happens, then after the second time, that is something that, hey, it's like, hey, um, I was just curious. Can we have a, I would love to have a conversation about just, just our sex life. And um, can, we, can we talk about it? You know, because I'd love to just share some thoughts. Like, are you open to that? And just open up that container to see if he's even receptive to even want to communicate with you about it. Because some people, there may have had something happen in their life that they don't feel comfortable talking about their emotions, especially with something as vulnerable as sex, or they may not know how to communicate their needs and wants in sex because nobody has ever asked them. They have never been heard. Somebody may have used sex like as weaponized against them for them to have a certain behavior. So they withheld sex. So if they did this, they were a bad boy. So they didn't receive sex. So they're now afraid to even voice their opinion. So Oftentimes, there's reasons why people behave a certain way in sex that you may be triggered or you may create a story that, oh my God, what is this saying about me? But it's being able to invite a conversation with him and allowing him to express himself to you. And then as he feels comfortable talking about sex, then you can often go into, so I was just curious, you know, like, can we just talk about like what each other likes? And if he's okay with that, like, what is your what is your view on anal? Is that something that matters to you? It doesn't matter to you? Do you like it? And if it doesn't matter to him and you don't like it, well, that's something that you can agree upon. But if he craves it and you have a negative experience with it, then that's a conversation that needs to come up mm-hmm. between the both of you that one person craves this, but one person had this happen to her that it was a very negative feeling. 
And honestly, I don't know if I'm ready to experience that again. I may be open to it later after I've let this process, but right now, I don't know you well enough to allow you to do that with me yet Mm -hmm. because you don't want to allow somebody to to do things to you if you don't see a foreseeable future unless that's what you want if that's what you want you just want to hook up but that needs to be said with each other that this is my intentions this is what i want so that's also another thing it's like hey like are we just hooking up or are, are you looking to to maybe start dating and then kind of seeing where this goes like are you wanting to have a long-term relationship because that's another thing to be talking about like what your intentions are sexually Mm -hmm. and not having one person thinking oh my god like this is the most amazing sex i feel so close to him i think this is relationship material and he's just thinking you're a hookup Mm -hmm. you know so it's having these types of conversations and i think it's like after the second time to knowing what it is that you both like and dislike and being objective like not making a story out of it but just asking like do you enjoy eating me out? Not really. Um, okay. You, do you, do you want to have, do you want to have a conversation? Why? Like, I just want to understand why I'm not taking this personally that it's co- because of me, but I'll, I'm just curious. Like, why do you feel that way? And there's probably a reason mm-hmm. from something that happened in his past that maybe he did do it, but his last girlfriend or wife told him that he was a piece of shit um, in oral and he was never good enough to to make her come and whatsoever. So he just thinks he has a story that oral sex, I'm going to be punished. It has nothing to do with you. So it's, it's talking objectively and having those conversations mm-hmm. and then coming away from those conversations and actually implementing it. Mm-hmm. So if I'm telling you, I don't want this, I don't want your penis to be going this. If I'm telling you from the beginning, I don't feel comfortable doing this right now. Mm-hmm. And it's not something that over time as the trust builds, and they feel safe, like women, you know, maybe they'll want to do that or try it. But it's important to know straight on if that is even a possibility or if it's just that something that is just an absolute no-go, this is something I don't want to do. And having the courage to have these conversations and to have compassion and patience and trust in the other person. Yeah, having these conversations is very important, especially what you were saying, Steve, about your relationship. So maybe you, you know, have sex after your first date or the second date, and maybe you just want a casual hookup, which is totally fine if you're in that space, or if you really, I'm in a point in my life where I want to get to know someone. I want to have a foundation. I want to have a safe space before I enter into that, into that space with somebody else. And, and, you know, maybe there's things you you try. And sometimes when there are sexual things, like maybe he's not holding you after, maybe he's going to sleep right after, or maybe you can pick up, some, there's some red flags that I've seen in the past that have happened in the very beginning of a sexual relationship, but because I wanted to hold on to the relationship so much that I ignored those red flags. So it's better to have these conversations in the beginning because you know, maybe they're not holding you or something because they're emotionally unav- unavailable, or maybe they're, they've overcome some addictive patterns in the past. So have these conversations and let these uncomfortable things come up so you can have a better sex life and you can be better. You see if you're even compatible at that point, right? Yeah. Cause, cause sex is such an important part of having a, a loving relationship. And when things aren't, aren't going well, like if you're not feeling Oh, this is like reminiscent of our first love talk. Is the- yeah. <laughs> well, that that siren. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was outside the last one. <laughs> it's like deja vu. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, because like I feel we need to have we need to have clear intentions. We also need to have boundaries. And we also need to have what we want as far as in our our sex life. And if we're not receiving it, if we're not receiving it as well as love, like going back to the love languages, if we're not receiving how we want to be felt, how we want to be touched, how we want to be made love to, how we want to be fucked, you know, like if we're not receiving it, how we truly feel an amazing sex life would be like, we need to be able to have a discussion about it, having a heart-centered discussion about these things that we we may feel that we're not receiving in a way where we're not projecting any type of attitude or behavior 
onto the other person to make them feel less worthy of you, but it's being able to create that space to where you can have dialogue. Um, just going, you know what, like um, when you shave, this hurts. When you let it grow out mm -hmm. this way, it kind of feels like this when you're riding me and it hurts my penis because mm -hmm. it feels like this. And it's being able to have honest conversations like that so that person can understand that I'm not being mean against you. I am, I'm just, I just want to express some things that are happening and what it's, how it's affecting me. And is there, a, is there a possibility of this? Like, is there a possibility that you can shave before we do this? Because if you shave two days ago and you let it grow, it, it kind of hurts this, you know? And it's the same thing as a man because I, I had that um, conversation with somebody where- it Hurts, stubble. It, and, and she was like, she explained it to me. She's like, it kind of feels like- Sandpaper. Stubble. It's, it feels like sandpaper. So when, when you have sex, it hurts her vagina. And so I was like, oh shit. Like, I, I didn't even know that. So I had to make changes. And I didn't take it personally because I knew that she was coming from a sense of, she's just sharing with this to me because I needed to know this. And when you are able to have that dialogue and coming into it from not a sense of wanting to put somebody down, but you're just talking, having a conversation about things that you're appreciating, things that you really don't like, or like, you know, I know we tried anal last week, but you know, there's something about it. I just, I just don't feel clean doing it. And can we not do that anymore for the time being? And if I feel ready for it, then we'll have that. I'll let you know. But for now, like, I really want to stop doing that, mm -hmm. you know? And it's being able to talk about that because when I started doing that and having those conversations and it's like real conversations and it's objective, I'm sharing, she's sharing, and there's no meaning coming out of this. There's no story behind like, oh, what does this mean about me? Or what are you trying to say? And not taking it personally. And you're just understanding each other's dialogue, not taking meaning behind it, not taking it personally. You can accomplish so much mm -hmm. in learning about what that person needs sexually, as well as some things that it would help if you improved on this. And I need to learn this on my own. Or if you can show me how you want to be licked or something, or the pressure, or if you can move my head a certain way and tell me if I'm in the right place, you know, this will help me. So it's being able to have dialogue with somebody and asking for help if, if you feel, and not thinking about your ego, thinking that you can figure this on your own, but asking that person, like, can you help me? Can you help me? Can you show me like how you want to be touched? How, how you want, to be licked you know i thought i knew but i guess i don't but it would really help me and it's for the other person to be self-aware of how that person's body is reacting to what you're doing like how is her hips moving like is her hips moving a certain way when you're doing this when you're doing this does she even move at all is she even moaning has anything changed why has anything changed it's probably because you're not doing it right or you're going all around and you're not focused on one area, you know, like, but it's having those conversations mm -hmm. and ask, asking for help because people are willing to give you help, especially when it comes sexually, but you have to come from a sense of objectiveness of heart centered, as well as not taking things personal when people are sharing about things that um, you thought that you were doing great and they maybe weren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another thing is, if somebody's got some absolute need, like something that they need in a sex life and they're not getting it from their partner. So say they want to have threesomes, that's part of it. And they want to have other partners into the mix. And then, or maybe it's, they want anal all the time or, or maybe they dress up, they get off by dressing up in women's clothing. Those are some things that the, your partner needs to know pretty early on without trying to scare them because if it's innate for something that you you need, it's better than like being three months down the road and then slipping this in that you should have, you kind of wanted to know about in the beginning. So you can be like, you know, let no judgment, let them go on your way because it just doesn't work for you. Or, you know, just stay in and see if it's something that you can, would want to consider. I know some of those things are non-negotiable 
to a lot of people. So yeah, some of those things need to be addressed in the very beginning. So you can decide, hey, you know, I want to explore with this person or like, no, I'm absolutely not going to go that realm with you. So it's been real, but peace out. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Cause like everybody's different. Like, I mean, if you're a person that you are looking into getting into polyamory, like relationships, that is something that your partner needs to know. That is something that you're curious about. And if you're not satisfied with just being a one person and you feel you need to explore your sexuality, like if you're a woman and you want to have another woman and a man, like, or you want to have two men, like that's something that that man needs to know that you are interested in and you're curious about. So is this going to affect his ability to be in whatever that relationship is going to be, whether it's polyamory or it's a monogamous? Because oftentimes, like some people are willing to do whatever it takes to make a relationship work. And Mm -hmm. some people, they live and die by what they believe in, their values, um, their principles in life. And some people, they just feel that it's one person and that's it. And some people, they crave being able to be into their sexuality, to have intimacy with several people. And it's the same feeling as somebody with that's monogamous, but they crave that with several people. Mm-hmm. And that's something that you definitely need to recognize if that's something that I can actually deal with. Is this something that I want to explore? Or do I know from the very beginning, I am a monogamous type of person. There's no point in me investing into this emotionally and sexually because I know what this other person wants, you know? And that's definitely you need to put those things out there, like um, especially when when your relationship becomes emotionally and sexually intimate. Because if one person is viewing the relationship as, as one and one the other, that's hurting that person who is not willing to change who they are for you. And now that person is now emotionally and sexually intimate with you. It's harder for that person to just let go. Yeah. And that's another important thing is you can do things that you know your partner likes and loves, but if you're doing it compromising to your own values and your own wants and absolutely abhor doing it, but you're doing it because you want to hold on to this relationship. You don't want to lose this person, and but you're losing yourself and you're going to eventually lose the relationship because what happens is, you know, after all the fiery romance of, you know, the honeymoon phase of the uh, relationships and, and the sexual time, because it does ebb and flow. And, but you can still, I think the greatest relationships have that sexuality, that polarity, that fire burning just beneath the surface that can be ignited at any time. Those are the ones that really work because if you don't and you're doing something you don't like it's eventually going to stop your partner's not going to get what they need and you're going to turn into roommates you are going to be a roommate that's the difference between having this simmering relationship that thrives over time that's what differentiates you from being a roommate is having that juiciness that attraction that chemistry and that polarity that keeps bringing you back together yeah and it's all about i think um it was matthew hussey that talked about um people that have really thriving relationships, you're constantly reinventing your relationship. You're not the same person when you were 25 as the same person when you're 70. And you're creating new relationships within your relationship. You're growing into a different person and your relationship grows as well. So what you may have been doing or or experiencing through your 20s, it may look totally different in your 30s and 40s, but you still can create new experiences, new moments whether it's through your emotional intimacy, your sexual intimacy, whatsoever. But it's about constantly finding ways to create new experiences in your relationship so it doesn't just stay stagnant. It doesn't stay the same from the time that you were married until the time that you pass away. You know, you're constantly working on it to, to bring more, like you said, bring more fire into the relationship, bring more stimulation, bring more experiences. And you don't have to bring in another person into that, but It's about finding new ways that you can grow in different parts of your relationship that you just are not changing your identity, but you're just changing different parts of it, changing different parts of your relationship. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know that you had mentioned that you had done the Passion Blueprint. Is that what it's called? You went to that for with Jaya. Mm -hmm. And I know that you do a lot of work with helping women help with deeply rooted emotionally wounding and to strengthen emotional intimacy. And through, I know you're an uh, NLP practitioner and you're, you know, you're coaching women. So where can women or men, I know you work with them as well, where can they find you to start unifying these most important aspects of ourselves, sexuality, our love languages, how we relate to each other so we can create these, so you can help them create these amazing relationships with themselves and then with the person that they're with or that they're wishing to bring into their life to create this beautiful, emotional, sexual, stimulating relationship with. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I have um, a link that I'll be attaching with the podcast and it's basically to to hop on a discovery call with me. And from then we kind of go on a call and we work on what it is that we want to work on as well as where we're at. And if the both of us can definitely partner together on this. And from then we then go through a package or we go through one-on-one coaching. So right now I'm working through having people hop on a, a call with me. And then from then we go into working together and I'll have that link. Um, attached for you. Great, great. Yeah. And I know uh, we spoke in episode eight Mm -hmm. uh, regarding like relation, compassion, um, relationships are so important. You have to go back and listen to that one. And, you know, I will attach in the show notes how you can find and how you can work with Steve. And in that other episode, I had asked him what it was to, what an awakened heart meant for him, for Steve. So this one, I'm going to ask, what does an awakened heart mean in a relationship? Mm, I feel an awakened heart in a relationship. It's being able to, to truly unconditionally feel and see and love somebody for for who they are, taking in everything that they are and elevating that person with all the gifts and special qualities that they already have. And it's being that person's champion, Mm. being that person's ride or die and knowing that the both of you are so much, are so much better because each person was born Mm. and you were both at this moment in time, the both of you were put on this planet to be together. And there's nobody else that could create the love, the intimacy, the connection that the both of you combine can create with with each other. I think that's the best way that I can explain Mm -hmm. it. Beautiful, beautiful. I just let that sit with you. Let that sit with us. Beautiful words from Steve Shannon. Thank you so much for coming on again. This has been such an introspective, fun, at points, PG-13 conversation. (laughs) It's been a lot of fun and I appreciate you so much. I honor you for all the work that you're done on yourself and that you help so many others to come along into the journey that they have to dive into themselves and to help them through whatever it is that they need to be help through in order to thrive in life, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you so much and for just giving me the opportunity to have a conversation with you on just so many things that I feel we don't have those conversations about, but we're able to just have this safe space to to have a discussion on so many aspects of relationships, of dealing with traumatic events, of love languages. And I think when we when we have these conversations, it cultivates growth, it cultivates safety with so many people to to share these with with other people and other people can be educated, other people can learn about this to to have the kind of relationships that that we all hope to have. Mm-hmm. Cuz that's what what it's about. It's about it's about love at the end. It's about love and it's love that you have for another person um that creates this beautiful nucleus that it's it's us against the world or not against the world, but it's us. We can take on and handle everything because we've got each other. We've got each other. Beautiful. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you, Steve. Once Thank again. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Awaken Heart Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, head on over to your favorite podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can reach me at the awakenheartpodcast.com.